Over the years, there have been countless blunders on Hell's Kitchen. Like, do you remember when this happened? Zaki Wacky. Chef Zach! This is a joke. Yo, Chef. Do me a favor. Get out! Yes, Chef. Or how about this? It's coming, baby! You cook like a fucking baby! Well, turns out, not even the champion of champions was immune to making mistakes. Chef Christina Wilson is the GOAT hands down. She survived the cattiness and toxicity of season 10, came out on top, and quickly rose through the ranks of Gordon Ramsay's food empire. The fact that she's got mad skills isn't even up for debate. Her entire journey on the show was a treat to watch, and yes, by entire journey, I also mean her lows. This is a joke, an absolute joke. Now, at one point, Christina teamed up at the meat station with Robin. Her execution of the Wellington dish, unfortunately, fell a little short of expectations. What in the fuck is that? Who cooked that? Come here. Chef Ramsay's discerning eye caught wind of an oversight, raw dough in her Wellington. Are you fucking for real? You want me to serve that out there? It's just a joke. What's more, Dana accused her too, but she had a good counterpoint. That's the thing with baking Wellington, you don't know until the end and there's nothing you can do. Like, oh, one of these beef, they have to be okay. Chef Ramsay then swung by the meat station only to find more Wellingtons with the same issue, raw dough. This prompted a frenzied effort from both Christina and Barbie to swiftly craft new dough in the middle of the service. We took the ones that were rolled, broke them down, rolled out new pastry dough, rewrapped them and got them in the oven right away, just sitting there waiting for it to cook. Tensions soared further when Christina plated yet another Wellington with uncooked pastry. Look, it's like fucking snot. There's just no thought. The weight of these blunders was bearing heavily on our champ. Shut it down and fucking clean up. What's more, the red team nearly brought her to tears as she grappled with her performance and the challenge of bouncing back. I didn't expect my first dinner service to be like this. I'm just sorry that uh, I couldn't come through. Well, look at where she's at today. Christina has come a long, long way, and if you adore her as much as I do, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and don't forget to turn on my post notifications. But do you remember what happened during season 12's Italian family night service? You just see one go in the trash, two go in the trash, ten go in the trash, and we look like asshole. Yep, the whole performance of the blue team was something, something tragic. And to add to the pressure, Chef Ramsay's family was in attendance too. So Chris, eager for redemption after having stumbled in the previous challenge, geared up for a turnaround. The first order hit the deck and Chris saw his chance. But fate had other ideas in mind. His initial attempt ended up, well, a little extra crispy. It's burnt and raw. I can't use it. Watch out. As for the second shot, that dough didn't make the cut, so it hit the bin. Dude, this is impossible. I can't use that. God damn. Anyway, he continued grappling with the pizzas when Scott delivered some really disheartening news. His third attempt was charred at the bottom. Meanwhile, Anton, facing his own challenges, walked up with just one order of scallops. And that was all despite Richard not being prepared with his part of the dish. Scallops are walking! Where's the other f***ing order? Come on, Richard, please! As if things weren't tense enough, Anton's eye caught their bottle of oil placed on the flat top. A simple little action to retrieve it turned catastrophic when to his shock, the bottom of the bottle melted away. Get that out now. No, 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 no. Yeah, what's Hell's Kitchen without Hellfire, right? I swear to God, I'm fucking believable. Whew, crisis averted. An hour into the service, Richard finally managed to get his redo approved. However, Chris's battle with the pizzas persisted. Despite Scott's attempt to assist, the pizzas stubbornly kept coming out burnt. Burn, 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 burn. It's burnt. Dude, this is fucking bullshit, dude. The tipping point arrived when Gabriel served up a pizza that was more charcoal than, well, pizza. There's a big difference between something crisp and something black. That is disgusting. God, I don't even think I've seen an uglier pizza than that. I have to turn them every 90 seconds. That's what we've been doing, so chef. So why is it wrong? As they re-entered the kitchen, Scott rallied, acknowledging they were struggling, but emphasizing the need to power through. Perseverance is what made him a winner in my eyes, but this time, it was simply not his night. The whole pizza fiasco compelled Chef Ramsay to shift his focus to firing the entrees. In the midst of this transition, Ralph stumbled, serving up a raw ribeye that landed on the pass. Hey. Ribeyes and the cooks, medium rare, it's fucking raw. Ralph's string of mishaps continued when he sent out raw lamb, with one piece being sliced exceptionally thin, leaving Chef Ramsay astounded. How do you manage lamb like that? That's not cooked, and that one there is like a scrag end. As the two hour mark for the service hit, Ralph finally secured approval for his refires. However, the pizza station remained a nightmare, with Chris discarding yet another attempt. 
Oh my God, it was hurting my heart. Every pizza that went in the garbage, that was a kid not getting fed. That's a lot of food wastage. I mean, when you think about all the children in the world right now dying of starvation, these visuals look like a horror scene. Then, the situation took an even dire turn when the men discovered that they were out of dough, leaving Chef Ramsay seething with frustration. We're out of dough. Say that again. We're out of pizza dough, Chef. Shit! An infuriated Ramsay confronted both Chris and Scott, demanding a solution to this predicament. Turns out, out of the 36 portions they prepared, a mere 10 pizzas had made it to the tables. In an attempt to make amends, Chef Ramsay called upon Jean-Philippe to escort Scott and Chris to the affected tables for an apology. Scott, feeling deeply embarrassed, shared his discomfort, having been accustomed to making pizzas with his family. I make pizzas all the time with my family, and so this is embarrassing. Ugh, tough night. But guess what's worse? Serving an almost empty plate to Chef Ramsay. So what happened is, during Season 15's Ingredient Number Challenge, Joe took a bold step. Wanting to ensure that his lobster wasn't overdone, he decided to give it a taste test. Feeling a little adventurous, he aimed to spruce up his dish, admitting that he hadn't really fancied up lobster before. So I gotta jazz it up a little bit and taste it along the way just to make sure it's cooked properly. <coughs> when it was his turn, Joe nervously presented his lobster creation to Chef Ramsay, marking the third blue team member to face the judgment. This landed him head-to-head -head against Jackie in the lobster round, both vying to impress the chef. His offering for the challenge was a three-ingredient warm lobster salad coupled with corn and couscous. However, Chef Ramsay wasn't impressed with the dish's appearance. Looks like the size of a prawn. Where's the lobster? I can't see the tail, I can't see the claw, I can't see the knuckles. When he inquired about the lobster, Joe admitted to tasting it, leading Chef Ramsay to emphasize that the challenge was about cooking and not indulging in a taste test. So you tasted the piece, the claw, the knuckle? I, I did, Chef. Did you taste the tail? I believe so, Chef. I mean, that was hilarious. Despite Chef Ramsay feeling shortchanged and somewhat let down by Joe's approach, he did acknowledge the dish's delightful taste and commendable flavor profile. However, Joe fell short in that round, losing to Jackie. And that's when Chef Ramsay dropped him a golden nugget of advice. Uh, young man, next time, have a bigger breakfast, will you, first? Yes, Chef. Alright, let's see what happened when Scott was cooking tableside in Season 18. During his first and last dinner service, he held down the fish station alongside Jose. In a crucial moment, he sent up shrimp, mistakenly preparing only enough for one order. He actually believed that he heard an order for just one instead of two earlier on. What do you need, Chef? Oh my god! When Scott sought Chef Ramsay's guidance on what was required, Ramsay's response was loud and clear. He urgently demanded the additional shrimp for the second risotto, emphasizing its necessity. But Scott defended himself. He felt a tad bit confused about Chef Ramsay's instructions and wanted the pace to ease up a little bit. I need him to slow down to be able to process that information. Trying to fix things, Scott sent out six shrimp thinking he needed more, even though he only needed three extra for the order. This move annoyed Chef Ramsay and sous chef Christina to no end. Six shrimp, Chef. Oh my god, you only need oh three now. God. You already cooked three. As if that wasn't enough, Chef Ramsay caught Scott cooking more shrimp, thinking it was for the ongoing orders. However, Scott clarified that he was prepping them for the tableside service. Pardon? You'd already done the order! It's gone! Tableside. Oh man, Chef Ramsay wasn't having it. He pointed out that the tableside was Scott Lee's duty, not Scott's. To drive the point home, Chef Ramsay took Scott to Scott Lee, causing Scott some serious embarrassment amongst the team. Tableside means it's sat next to the <laughs> table. Yes, yeah, Chef. This is so embarrassing. Scott, your journey on HK was short-lived, but you were fascinating. Though, maybe Chef Ramsay would use a different F word for you. I'll leave that one up to your imagination. By the way, here's a pro kitchen tip I came across in America's most influential food magazine, Bon Appetit. It says, for perfectly cooked fish and meat, use a cake tester. Well, they forgot to mention this tip doesn't work in Gordon Ramsay's kitchen. During the steak night dinner service, Vlad manned the meat station, checking the steaks for their temperature. After confirming the readiness of the steaks, he gave Alejandro the green light to send out a salmon. However, despite Vlad's approval, Alejandro served raw fish, leading Chef Ramsay to showcase the error to the blue team. To add to the mishap, Ramsay discovered that the ribeye was also undercooked. That's not pink, that's raw. That's the ribeye. Oh, undercooked. Yeah, they're both under. Acknowledging the blunder, Vlad swiftly secured approval for a refire. In the subsequent order, he aimed for accuracy and confidence. He employed a cake tester to gauge the warmth of the dishes before sending them out. I'm gonna give them a little cake test at the end, make sure that they're warm throughout, to make sure that all the steaks come out perfectly. When the entrees made their way back to Chef Ramsay, he brought the blue team into the back pantry for a revealing moment. 
To the team's dismay, Ramsey pointed out that the fillets were served cold. Just touch that, just touch that. This is a joke. It's a salmon, it's a filler. Feeling the weight of the failure, Vlad experienced embarrassment. I feel like Jack on the Titanic. I'm deep in freezing waters and I'm Right on. Amidst the tension, Alex stepped in to assist Vlad with the sticks. However, Abe expressed doubt, feeling that Vlad should have been more competent in handling the task. Vlad, you know how to cook steak. You work at a damn steakhouse, man. Now, Vlad stood as the blue team's initial nominee for elimination, accompanied by Alejandro as the second nominee. The former faced elimination due to his subpar performance on the meat station and his apparent misuse of a cake tester. You need to know the difference between a meat thermometer and a cake tester. In his defense, he maintained that he stayed authentic to himself during his plea and lamented that the cake tester incident negatively affected his performance. Ultimately, this led to his elimination from the competition. But Chef Ramsay was unmoved. It's called cake tester for a reason. It tests cakes, not steaks. Vlad, that was bad. Stone cold. Anyway, this reminds me of a certain someone. Any guesses who? None other than the deer in the headlights, Melinda. Look at all this fucking... Who's putting all this in the bin? During her only dinner service, Melinda was paired with Lovely at the appetizer station. But their performance was marked with so much inconsistency. Their struggle reached a peak when they had to redo a Capellini pasta dish for the first table an astonishing eight times. We've only had one table, but have made the same dish six million times. On the eighth attempt, Tenille, concerned about the pasta's doneness, asked Melinda if it was properly cooked. Melissa insisted that it was, yet Chef Ramsay determined that it was still undercooked. Nah, it's not cooked. Adding to the chaos, Melinda made a critical mistake by carelessly discarding the pasta into the trash bin. She mistakenly believed that this was the right way to rectify the issue somehow. What do you do? You just trash it straight away. Just put it back on the stove, put a lid on top and 30 seconds cooking it. The amount of food being wasted here hurts my soul. It of course upset Chef Ramsay, who intended for her to salvage the dish by simply returning it to the stove to finish cooking. Because like, duh. Then Chef Ramsay stumbled upon an alarming sight. Melinda had recklessly wasted far more pasta than he initially had thought. She'd been pulling this little stunt since the start of the service. Visibly horrified, he began removing the vast pile of wasted pasta, shocking not only himself, but also the rest of the women in the kitchen. Chef Ramsay demanded an explanation about the extent of the wasted pasta. However, Melinda appeared to be way too stunned to respond, and her eyes were wide with disbelief. Hey, madam, how much cappellini are you throwing away? What are you doing? That was a crazy look. As the chaos intensified, Chef Ramsay reached his limits and shut both kitchens down. While the teams were cleaning up, Melinda, still wearing a shocked expression, seemed unable to snap out of her daze. Later on, during the lineup, Chef Ramsay delivered a stern warning to Melinda, emphasizing that her time in the competition was dwindling. Melinda, lovely. You are running out of time. Melinda found herself as the red team's initial choice for elimination, swiftly followed by Amanda. Her elimination stemmed from being, obviously, the worst performer of the night. And, of course, her lack of enthusiasm to compete didn't contribute very positively to her standing in the competition. I really was looking forward to spending more time with Chef Ramsay. I'd love to make you a four-course dinner, and you could see exactly what kind of talent I have. Oof. Okay, now who remembers Kenneth's cheese potato fiasco? During the Creative Shrimp Challenge, eager to make amends for his earlier lackluster performance in the Signature Dish Challenge, Kenneth expressed a strong desire to prove his culinary skills to Chef Ramsay. He even credited his great-grandmother's influence as motivation. I didn't learn from a cookbook. I didn't go to culinary school. I learned from my great-grandmother. When sous chef Jay was tasked with identifying two of the weakest dishes from the blue team, Kenneth found himself as the primary nomination, followed by Elliot as the second choice. They were paired with Nikki and Jordan from the red team for potential elimination. Now, Kenneth approached Chef Ramsay with a blend of nerves and prayers to the shrimp gods for luck. His offering? A shrimp penne pasta jazzed up with sautéed peppers and bacon. But the famous chef spotted something peculiar on the plate. What the f*** is that? I have no clue, chef. It looked like a potato, and I didn't even use potatoes. Chef Ramsay revealed the mystery clump for everyone else to see. He sought confirmation if anyone among the men had included potato in their dishes. Blue team, we have a potato that has dropped in Kenner's dish. Who's got potato in their fucking dish? To the chef's collective denial, Chef Ramsay orchestrated a tasting session for Kenneth in order to put the mystery to bed once and for all. Taste that. It's a block of pearls on you fucking 
donut. I've grated the Parmesan cheese. Grated? It's a block of Parmesan in there. No way. In an attempt to justify the mishap, Kenneth insisted that he grated the cheese. However, a revealing flashback showed a little bit of a different story. There was a moment where he sliced off a chunk onto the plate without even realizing it. After an unpalatable taste experience, Kenneth attempted to salvage the situation. He argued that he knew the disparity between potato and cheese, but adamantly claimed that the clump resembled a potato. Yo, I know the difference between a potato and Parmesan cheese, but it looked just like a potato. Come on, man, what was that? Ultimately, Chef Ramsay delivered his verdict, labeling the dish as a complete disaster. But the next contestant made so many mistakes that pretty much everyone lost what little respect they had for her. During the dinner rush in episode 7, Corey was handling the garnish station for the red team. She knew that getting the garnish right was crucial for keeping the kitchen line running smoothly and had a chat with Mary Lou about timing. Trouble brewed when the meat station served up meat intended for the next order. They're not ready, garnish not ready, and look, on top of all that, I got two bits of black shit salmon. And this is when Corey informed them about the refire that was needed. Lamb gully, two salmon, one halibut, that is the refire. Okay, now keep track of this because unfortunately, the order was for the wrong ticket. Sorry to disturb you, the meat station brought the lamb again. The lamb is for the next ticket. You told us there was a lamb on this ticket. Yeah, and this is why Nikki rightly blamed Corey for the premature firing, sparking a disagreement. Even though Corey denied giving the order, a flashback revealed otherwise. Don't tell us no. to fire it if it's not fired. I didn't say fire. I said next ticket. Why would you lie so blatantly? Like, you have to know that that's not gonna go well for you. Things heated up as Jordan accused Corey of causing their issues, refusing to take the blame for what she believed wasn't solely her fault. This miscommunication seriously hampered the red team's efficiency. To add even more to the chaos, on their third attempt, Corey served up soggy fries. This marked one of the three critical mistakes that led to the red team's expulsion from the kitchen. Fries soggy, undercooked, beef overcooked, and salmon's ice cold in the middle. F off. Now let's skip all the way to episode 14. During Mary Lou's stand at the pass, Corey made a huge blunder by presenting a raw lamb. This was a mistake that gave her Mary Lou's undivided attention. And Chef Ramsay made his disappointment crystal clear too. I want to know what's happened. Yes, Chef. It's a small lamb, it's not even big, and that's, not, that's miles away. Yes, Chef. Then, when Adam Carolla's table received their dishes, Corey saw timings for the next order. It was her turn at the pass. But she left her station messy. So, the situation took a turn when Cody, at the meat station, presented undercooked Wellingtons. That's nowhere near cooked. No. Cody rightly accused Corey of leaving his station in disarray, insinuating that she had set him up for failure. So there was four burnt lambs, three Wellingtons that looked like they were overcooked, and then they were raw. I just felt like I was set up to fail. As Cody refired the Wellingtons, tensions escalated. Unfortunately, the second attempt was also flawed, with Wellingtons cold at the center. Those Wellingtons are cold in the center, Chef. I need three minutes. I don't have three minutes. Cody requested additional cooking time, a request that Corey hesitated to grant, leading to further conflict. Corey's performance was the reason that the meat station is a disaster. Hmm, so were you Team Corey or Team Cody here? Let me know in the comments section down below. But speaking of blunders, I think Season 3, Episode 3 was full of them. Now, the Blue Kitchen received its first order. Chef Ramsay wasted no time critiquing Rock's risotto preparation. No, 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 you don't toss a f risotto! To add to the situation, Rock unintentionally winked due to the sweat dripping into his eyes, which Chef Ramsay chastised him about. Now you're acting like a big donkey. Then, the famous chef, noticing Rock's discomfort, requested Jean-Philippe to get some tissues for him. Medic, medic! Get Rock some tissues, please, yeah? He's got ointment in his eye. Oh, yeah, it was a sticky situation. Meanwhile, in the red kitchen, Joanna encountered trouble with her risotto too, which turned out to be excessively salty, necessitating a complete restart. It's soft, it's salty, and it's just, it's crap. Start again. Yes, sir. Despite the setback, Joanna and Bonnie collaborated on sending out their refired order. However, Chef Ramsay discovered that Bonnie's scallops were undercooked, leading to his visible frustration. And it didn't help that Bonnie kept pestering him with dumb, obvious questions. What's wrong? Are they raw? You just asked me, are they raw? Why don't you tell me what the f they are? They're raw, Chef. And yeah, what followed next was Joanna's rancid crab incident. Who could forget that, right? The crab is off! Can you not smell that? It's f***ing rancid! Anyway, one hour into the service, the women were experiencing delays, struggling to send out any orders. The blue team, on the other hand, had managed to serve almost half of their tables. However, Vinny began to slow down in preparing his scallops, much to Chef Ramsay's growing impatience. 
And then he discovered this. What is that? It's alright. What is that? Not really yet. Yikes! As the service approached the 1 hour and 41 minute mark, the diners in the blue team section grew increasingly restless due to the prolonged wait. Meanwhile, the women's team finally made progress in getting the food out, with Julia and Jen taking charge. However, in another WTF moment, Jen mistakenly discarded her cooked spaghetti since it wasn't needed at the moment. Scarlet risotto spaghetti, yes? Oh, you need more spaghetti, Julia? And well, what followed next was Jen's spaghetti from the trash incident. We had an order for spaghetti and I threw out what we had when I decided to retrieve the spaghetti and washed it. Now imagine if Julia didn't see it. Imagine. Meanwhile, Brad and Josh were handling the preparation of their entrees. However, tension arose when Josh admitted that he wasn't ready with his turbot. This prompted Chef Ramsay to accuse him of sabotaging Brad's efforts. Josh vehemently denied the accusation. Hey, are you just trying to sabotage them? No way. So that makes you look good. Ah, no rest for the Spaghetti King. Two hours into the service, Chef Ramsay observed that Brad was engaged in a troubling activity. He was attempting to salvage burned sections from the Wellingtons. Hold on, hold on, there's someone being dishonest. Lift the bottom of the Wellington over. Oh, come on. Meanwhile, in the Red Kitchen, Jen noticed that all of her Wellingtons were overcooked due to the sluggish start with the appetizers. Chef Ramsay, already frustrated by the situation, grew even more exasperated as they still had 17 Wellingtons pending. 17 on order, 3 to send. We're 14 short. You don't want to stay a bit longer? And the impatience of departing customers pushed Chef Ramsay to his breaking point. Get out! Get out! What a total, total disaster! 95% of your customers weren't served an entree. And well, how could you forget about Sade's rough day in the kitchen? So I'm basically doing a braised beef dish. I think the dogs are really gonna like it. I mean, it was foolish, but was it understandable? I don't know, you tell me. However, definitely a moment I doubt anyone's gonna forget. I don't know if I fried anything for dogs. I'm going to do a braised beef dish. I'm gonna cut it down into small pieces that they can actually eat. I mean, Chef Ramsay was shocked. What's this plate here? What is that? Braised beef. Braised beef. Looks like a dog shat all over my plate. Dude's got a real way with words, right? Fortunately for the blue team, Sade was exempt from judgment as they had an additional member sparing her dish from being evaluated. By the way, when it was time for the punishment, Sade, who so lovingly cooked for the dogs, stood out as the only team member who wasn't a fan of washing them. Puppies? Ready for your shower? For some of these guys, this is a reward and not a punishment. Yeah. Understandably. I hope they fed her dish to the pups, though. They probably would get a real kick out of it. So, can you think of any other blunders that I missed? Make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this next one right here since it's even better.